Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to have this opportunity to be here today and address this distinguished audience. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to Mr. Ralph Nickel, Vice President of the Council and Director Mr. Guntram Wolf and his team for organizing this event. Today, we are living at a time when not only natural, but also geopolitical tectonic shifts are taking place all around the world. Deepening geopolitical instability, growing tensions and unpredictability are weakening the world order and international security system, creating even bigger challenges especially for a country like Armenia with democracy making us more vulnerable in our complicated region. Dear attendees, we witnessed the first sprouts of today's challenges and the collapse of the European security architecture in our region back in 2020 when Azerbaijan unleashed a war against Nagorno-Karabakh. After the signing of the November 9, 2020 trilateral statement, Azerbaijan not only didn't abandon its bellicose politics and threats, but also carried out new aggression, this time against the sovereign territories of the Republic of Armenia in May 2021, November 2021, and September 2022. During the last aggression on September 13, 14, 2020, Azerbaijan launched a large-scale military attack targeting the military and civilian infrastructure of Armenia using heavy artillery, missile systems, and drones. As a result, the Armenian side had 225 victims, including three civilians. More than 100 square kilometers of the sovereign territory of Armenia were occupied. Today, I wouldn't like to go deep into the details of the aggressions of 2020, 2021, 2022, but it is impossible to ignore the evidences of multiple cases of torture, mutilation of captured or already dead Armenian servicemen including service women and other atrocity by Azerbaijani military forces. The horrible videos of the Azeri militaries committing ISIS-style war crimes by executing Armenian prisoners of war should be acknowledged and addressed by the international community. Another issue is the engagement of the mercenaries from Syria by Azerbaijan. During the aggression of September 2022, when the external security system of Armenia didn't work, we requested an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council that was held on September 15, 2022. During the meeting, the UN Security Council member states noted that the use of force is totally unacceptable explicitly named the aggressor. Azerbaijan highlighted the importance of adherence to the norms of international humanitarian law, emphasizing also the fact that civilian infrastructure of the territory of Armenia was targeted. An important step toward the escalation of the situation quadrilateral meeting of President Macron, President Michel, President Aliyev and me in Prague on October 6, 2020, where an agreement was reached on deploying short-term EU in a monitoring capacity along the international border between Armenia and Azerbaijan. When this mission mandate ended on December 19, 2022, at Armenia's request, the EU Council made a decision to deploy a new fully-fledged civilian mission on the territory of the Republic of Armenia for a two-year period. 
On behalf of the government of Armenia, I would like to express our gratitude to the EU and its member states, particularly to the government of the Federal Republic of Germany for its support to our request. The mission was launched on the 20th February, and I have already met the head of the mission, your compatriot with extensive experience in international deployments, Mr. Markus Ritter in Yerevan. The mission shall play a crucial role in ensuring security on the ground and stability in the region, as well as timely and reliable reporting on the current situation to our partners in the European Union and its member states. Dear colleagues, Azerbaijan, since December 12, 2022, in gross violation of the provisions of the trilateral statement of November 9, 2020, has been illegally blocked the Lachin corridor connected Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. The blockade resulted in a humanitarian crisis. 120,000 Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh had been cut off from natural gas, electricity, food, medical, and other vital supplies. Due to a severe shortage of food and other necessary goods, authorities of Nagorno-Karabakh had to take, take desperate measures, issued food coupons, and are rationing certain food, foodstuffs. Population receives only irregular power supplies from local electricity capacities. Universities, schools, and kindergartens were shut down, due to which more than 30,000 students and children were deprived of their right to education. On December 20, 2022, upon the request of the Republic of Armenia, an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council was held on the situation caused by blockade of the Lachin Corridor. The overwhelming majority of the UN Security Council members made clear demands to stop the blockade of the corridor by Azerbaijan and to ensure the access of international organizations to Nagorno-Karabakh. Dozens of countries and organizations issued a targeted condemnation of the blockade of the Lachin Corridor and urged Azerbaijan to end it. The Republic of Armenia has been putting efforts to send a UN and OEC fact-finding mission to Nagorno-Karabakh and Lachin Corridor. Also, the Republic of Armenia filed a request to the International Court of Justice of the United Nations under convention of the elimination of all forms of racial di discrimination to apply provisional measures to unblock the Lachin Corridor. On 2020 of February, early this year, the International Court of Justice issued its order to Azerbaijan to take all measures at its disposal to ensure the unimpeded movement of persons, vehicles, and cargo along the Lachin Corridor in both directions. Unfortunately, up to now, Azerbaijan failed to comply with the decision of, C of the ICJ and the traffic through the Lachin Corridor is still disrupted. Though the natural gas supply is restored, electricity supply to Nagorno-Karabakh having been cut off since 9th January 2023 has not been restored yet. Food supplies are still carried out by coupons and people are deprived of crucial medical care. Only Red Cross and Russian peacekeepers are able to deliver limited amount of food and necessary life-saving goods to Nagorno-Karabakh and transport people with healthcare emergency needs to Armenian hospitals. Growing aggressiveness of Azerbaijan toward Nagorno-Karabakh makes clear the intention of, intentions of Azerbaijan to carry out an ethnic cleansing 
of Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh. Recently, President Aliyev of Azerbaijan declared that Lachin Corridor is open for those Armenians who want to leave Karabakh. That means that Lachin Corridor is closed for those Armenians who live in Nagorno-Karabakh. 